Hi everyone, can you all hear me okay? Yep, fantastic. Okay, great. Can you all see me okay? Yep, brilliant. Okay, and final question, can you all see my presentation? Yep, fantastic. Okay, great. That's a really good start. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Ellie and I work for National Geographic Learning. It's lovely to see you all here and to welcome you all really to this webinar, which I think someone mentioned is this webinar for polls only. Yes, so this webinar is a very special webinar that we are doing for Nova Era, who are our distributor in Poland. So it is especially for you guys if you are in Poland. So it's lovely to see so many of you here. The numbers are going up all the time. So we'll just wait a few more moments for other people to join. But it's, yeah, it's great to see all of you. I must apologize for my surroundings. It's one of those times, isn't it, where because lots of people are working from home and are in different environments to normal, you have people with strange backgrounds. So welcome to my spare room. Um, I know you can do fun backgrounds on Zoom and things, but because I have a window behind my head, it doesn't work. It doesn't pick up very well because of the fact that there is light there. So anyway, welcome everyone. As I mentioned, so I work for National Geographic Learning and I am the Young Learner Product Marketing Executive. So what that means really is that I look after all of our young learner titles, so our books for kindergarten and for primary school, elementary school age learners. And what I really do is I help support both our editorial team when they're creating the books and also with our sales teams, our distributors and with our customers, lots of teachers who are using our books as well. So I do lots of bits of teacher training. But before I started working for National Geographic Learning, I was a teacher myself. So I know what it's like. I know how difficult things can be sometimes. And I really like the suggestion that I've just seen up there of saying meaning a glass of wine by getting a drink. Yes, by all means. So I think that might be a good idea. So I think without too much further ado, we'll get started. This session is being recorded. So if you lose connection at any point, don't worry, you will receive a recording. And equally, if you do find that you're having any problems at any point with sound or with the video or with the picture freezing, if you close the window and then click on the link to come back into it again, that solves almost all problems with this. And I can see that everyone who's watching is currently on um, a desktop or a laptop that's great because I do have a video that I want to show a little bit later. And sometimes that creates problems with mobiles, but at the moment, no one is on a mobile. So that's that's fine. That's not going to be a problem. OK, so what we're going to be talking about this evening, this is kind of our little agenda, if you like. So first, we're going to be talking a little bit about why we might want to use technology. Then we're going to be looking at some different tools that we can use to teach online in our young learner classroom. So that's going to be the classroom presentation tool, an ebook, online practice and learning management systems and additional online resources. And then we're going to finish off by looking at some general tips for teaching your young learners online. Now, I say teaching your young learners, but actually, I think some of these tips could equally apply if you're working with teenagers or with adults as well. And I should say just before we begin, that all of the examples I'm going to be showing you, so all of the materials that I will be sharing, these are all from the National Geographic Learning Series for Young Learners look. And if you want to find more information out about that, then my colleagues at Nova Era will be very happy to help you with that. So, as we get started, I'm going to ask all of you to participate in 
my little poll that I've just put up on the screen. So I've seen someone was very quick off the mark. Someone has clicked already. Um, you should be able to see a poll on your screen now. So it should be just to the left of the chat box. And I'd like you to choose which one is the right answer for you. So what describes your situation with teaching online at the moment? Okay, I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so you should be able to receive the results there now. So the people who've participated in that, the majority of you, I can see you're currently teaching all of your classes online. Some of you are currently teaching some of your classes online and some of you have said that you've taught online in the past but not now and no one has said that you've never taught online okay great so that's kind of what i was expecting that we were going to have a little bit of a cross section some people are going to have a bit more experience than others and that's okay i'm going to have parts of this are going to be a little bit interactive so i'm hoping that those of you who who are teaching maybe all of your classes online at the moment you might have some ideas that can help people who not been doing it for quite as long. So I've got another question for you just before we get started properly. And that is how confident do you feel about teaching your young learners online? So lots of you are already doing lots of teaching online, but how confident, how comfortable do you feel with that? Can you type a number in the chat box for me? So one is not at all confident and five is very confident. Okay, fantastic. Oh, so we've got quite a few, quite a few fours there and a few fives. So great. We've got some people who are very confident. That's brilliant. That's really good. And then we've got some people who are not quite so sure. We've got some twos and some threes. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that. And I hope that this webinar is useful for you. I hope that if you're down at the two, three end of the scale, that by the end of the webinar, you'll be feeling a bit more confident. And if you're already a four or a five, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you're really confident about it. I hope that there are some ideas that I'm going to share that will help you to further develop and increase your variety and, and all the different things that you're doing online with your learners. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at why we might use technology. And I'd like you in the chat box to tell me what are some of the advantages of using technology to teach young learners? It doesn't have to be a whole sentence, can just be few words, kind of like bullet points, but what do you think? What are some of the advantages of using technology when teaching your young learners? Uh-huh, yep, fantastic, thanks Maria. So yep, kids like computers, yep, definitely. It's close to real life, yep. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's something that they do in their real lives. It's something they do in their spare time. That's a really good point, Ava. Yes, they're, they're, gonna sh they're potentially going to thrive in this environment. If they're normally quite shy, it might give them another way to express themselves where they maybe feel more confident. Uh -huh, fewer problems with discipline. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, thank you. Really good ideas there. Yes. So actually you've said some of the things i'm going to say but these are just some of the things that i came up with so the first one is that it allows our learners to demonstrate independence and also to develop their independence if learners are using technology it potentially gives them the opportunity to work on their own depending on what task we've given them maybe they're working on creating a presentation or creating a short film or something like that. It's allowing them to find answers to things by themselves or to look up words they don't know, again, by themselves. They're not necessarily going to have to be so reliant on the teacher. 
and looking for information online also gives teachers a really valuable opportunity to encourage learners to evaluate what information they're looking at to think is this something that is trustworthy is it from a reliable source is it something that is likely to be accurate and credible information as well and we can even potentially encourage our learners to help each other with tech problems as well if one of them's having a problem with getting part of their getting their webcam for example or their microphone to work can their classmates maybe help them with that and be a little bit more independent it allows them to build their knowledge so as we've said it gives them a, a sorry it gives them a springboard so to speak if learners have got something that they're interested in then using technology gives them the opportunity to explore that for themselves to develop that knowledge and to find their own answers they're not necessarily going to be reliant on what people tell them it allows learners to actually choose how they're going to communicate and we said a moment ago that actually potentially students who maybe are a bit shy normally could thrive in this environment and part of that is because they've got different means available to express themselves than they maybe have normally in the classroom if we're using web conference software for example like zoom rather than always having to turn the microphone on and speak they might be able to write their answer or write their input in the chat box as learners get older and their English improves, they're also going to develop a greater understanding of how we have different purposes for communicating. We have different audiences and we communicate for different reasons. And using technology allows learners to choose media that's most appropriate to their message. Using technology is connected. If we're using technology, learners have got the opportunity to interact not only with their classmates, but potentially with other people around the world, with students in classes in other countries, for example. Provided it's done safely, this can be a great opportunity for learners to widen their horizons and to learn about other people's perspectives and experiences. It also sometimes can make it easier to differentiate for different students needs we can provide learners with extra support if needed for example if we're watching a video we can put the subtitles on learners can also produce different output they don't necessarily all have to produce the same type of work or the same piece of work learners can have a greater opportunity to use resources they're interested in. As we've said, they can find out about things, they can research things, they can easily look up vocabulary. If we do our job well, students are going to be inspired to learn more and they're going to be curious about the world around them. The internet means that it's never been so easy for our learners to follow up on what they've learned and find out answers to their questions. It also allows learners to be active in their learning. Although we might think physically they're not necessarily being very active because they're sitting and looking at a computer screen, it means that they can have a chance to play a more active role in their learning. Rather than just absorbing information, using technology means that learners have got the opportunity to share, to collaborate, and to publish their own work. They might, for example, produce a class blog or a class wiki. They're not just consuming information, they're actually going to be active producers of it. Someone already mentioned this, but learners want to use technology. When they're given the opportunity to do so, it, they're going to be motivated, they're going to be engaged, and it's going to be something that they'll be enthusiastic about. And as we all know, when they're motivated, when they're engaged, they're definitely going to learn better. When learners are given the opportunity to produce and publish their own information, this gives them an equal voice. 
they've got an audience, their input is valid. It doesn't necessarily matter if they're always the quiet one at class, for example. If they're producing something that's going to be shared with the rest of their class by the internet, then they've got an equal voice with everyone else. We've mentioned about it being potentially beneficial for shy students or less confident students or ones who need a little bit more support. They can potentially have an equal voice with those students who are louder and more confident and generally dominate the classroom more. And finally, sometimes we actually don't have a choice. I think if we've learned anything from the coronavirus pandemic, it's that we all need to have technology as an option, even if we previously shied away from it or tried to not use it too much. Actually, at times, maybe we need to use it. We simply haven't got the option not to. So having said all of that, hopefully you're now all thinking, yes, OK, this is important. This is something we need to do. So I'm going to share with you now some tools and some things that you can use to help you when teaching your young learners online. And as mentioned, these are all uh, components of our series for young learners look. So the first thing that you could use is the classroom presentation tool, or you might know this as interactive whiteboard software. It's still a bit better known, I think, as interactive whiteboard software. Now, you might be thinking, ah, oh, but I haven't got an interactive whiteboard. I'm teaching from home. I haven't got access to my classroom. How can I do this? So this is what we're going to be talking about in a moment's time. But the interactive whiteboard software for Look has got the student book pages and the workbook pages in it. So they're exactly the same as the pages that your students would have in front of them. And that's why we're going to be talking about using this here as well. It's got games and activities and the audio and video all embedded within it. Now, I'm going to talk about some ideas and some different ways that you can use the classroom presentation tool if you're teaching your young learners online. Now, it should be mentioned that the way we're thinking of you potentially doing this is to use video conferencing software such as Zoom, for example, and you're going to load the interactive whiteboard software on your computer and then you're going to share your screen with your students using Zoom. Now, I have some resources that I'll share a bit later on that will give you step by step instructions for how to do that if you're not sure and you're not sure about the different functionalities that video conferencing software has. Now, it should be mentioned before I do this that this is very reliant on you having a good internet connection. And it's important for both you and your students to have a fast and stable internet connection. In the event that you don't, it's going to be liable to lag, have some time delay and potentially freeze. And it's not going to be great either for you or your students. It's not going to be a very good learning experience for them. Now, having said that, what I wanted to do for you was to demonstrate some of the software and some ways that you can use it. Now, as mentioned, dependent very much on your internet connection and this webinar software is also quite heavy on the internet. So what I have decided to do with this is I filmed a video and I filmed this little video yesterday so I'm going to show you that now. So I'm still going to be here. You can still ask me questions in the chat box, but I'll respond in the chat box whilst we're doing this. So I won't be able to respond in the video because I recorded it yesterday. OK, so this is going to be a good exercise in hoping the technology works and not panicking if it doesn't. OK, so. I should have brought my video over to here now. OK, right. OK. Can you all see the video OK? It's not moving at the moment because I press pause. Yeah. 
Fantastic. OK, so I'm going to put my microphone on mute simply because otherwise we'll probably get a bit of an echo. But let me know in the chat box if you can. Hi, everyone. I wanted to show you a few ideas for how to use the classroom presentation tool to teach your young learners online. Now, when you launch the classroom presentation tool, you're going to have this screen here. This is the menu screen. This is going to look exactly the same, regardless of whether you have the CPT installed on your computer, you've installed it from the USB, or whether you're accessing it online through the learning management system and the online version. This menu screen shows you all of the different units that you've got in your book. So this is look level three. We can see all of the different units. And if I just put my mouse over one of these, you can see for each unit, you've got the student book and the workbook content. So first of all, you're going to want to go to the unit that you need to use and you're going to select whether you want the student's book or the workbook. I'm going to go to unit nine here because I really like this unit and I'm going to click on student's book. So then this gives me a list of all of the different lessons in the unit and I'm going to go to the unit opener to the beginning of the unit. Now, the default view for the CPT is a page spread. So you've got these two pages here that are opposite each other. So you'll always see two pages at a time. Now, sometimes this makes sense. If, for example, you've got a picture like this one where the page splits the image in two. You've got part of the picture on one page, part of the picture on the page next to it. But sometimes, if I just go back here again, we've got this picture on the one page, we don't really want to see the other page. That's where we're going to use this tool here, the single page tool. So if we click on that, we can see we've only got the one page. So our students will just focus on the page we want them to look at. Now, to access the different tools we can use with the interactive whiteboard software, we click on this button here, tools, and this will bring us up all of the different tools here. So one of the first things that we could do, maybe if we're going to show our learners this page, is we're going to ask them, what can you see in the picture? I want you to write down either on paper or in the chat box on Zoom, all of the different things that you can see in this picture. And we might, if we want to make it a bit more challenging, a bit more fun, set a timer like this. So that's using the timer button here. We can set the time. Let's make this, say, 30 seconds. And then we start. Now, once we've started the timer, we can move it out of the way so that our learners can still see it, but it's not going to be obscuring their view. And when this gets to the end, it will make a noise. I'm not going to let it run all the way through to the end. But that's how that works. If we want to reset it, we can press this one and it will go back to the beginning again. So we can use that again. Or if we want to get rid of it, we can just make it go away like that. Now, we've got lots of other tools here that you can see. And if I just go on to the next page in the book, so that's using the forward button here, let's have a look at some of those other tools. If we go back to dual page again, so we can see all of the picture. Now, let's try out an annotation tool. So. What we could do with this, we've got another big picture here, we could make the most of that by doing some annotation. So we've got a pen tool here. Let's have a nice thick line. And I think what colour is going to look visible on this? Probably the red one. 
So we could use this pen tool to mark different things on the picture and we could ask our learners what it is that we're pointing to. So we could ask them, for example, what's this? Or maybe what is this? Or what are these? So we can just write on the page with that pen tool. Now, if we're going to want to come back to that annotation later on in the lesson, we can use this tool here. So this will just take away all of our annotations all at once. But if you click on it again, they'll come back. So they're still there. They're just hidden for the duration of the time that we want them to be hidden for. If we want them to go away more frequent, but more individually, we can use the eraser here and then if we just click on each one we can rub out those annotations that we have just made. We've got undo and redo tools here and we've also got a highlighter. Now the highlighter is a really useful tool because we can ask our learners or we can do it ourselves, we can highlight words that our learners might not know or words that help them to work things out. So, for example, with this question, mm -mm, any shops, if we want to say to our learners, OK, how do we know what the right answer is? We could highlight the words any and shops. So we know with shops it's a plural, so it's probably going to be were or weren't rather than was or wasn't. And we've got any, we know and we know that it's a question. So we know that it's probably going to be were is the right answer. Now again, with that highlight, we can either hide the annotation if we want it to come back later on, or we can just use the eraser tool to rub it out again. Now, the final thing I wanted to show you is that the activities in the classroom presentation tool are interactive. If we get rid of the tools for a moment, you'll see we can play the audio that's included. It's embedded, so we just have to play. Activities, some of the activities are interactive. So if we click here, this activity will load and we can do this as an interactive activity like that. We get rid of that again. The video is also embedded. So if we go to the end of the unit, we've got a video lesson. And you'll see if we just click there, we can watch the video and we can do the activity. So we type in the answer there. Or if we just want to watch the video, we don't want the activity available, we just click on video here and this will come up. We can make the video full screen. Or we can turn, if I just skip forward a little bit so you can see when someone is talking, you can turn the subtitles on and off here. So we can turn subtitles off or on if our learners need a bit more support. And obviously we've got the volume tool here. You can play and you can pause and we can make that full screen if we want to as well. Sorry, I made the whole thing. So we could ask our learners with the video tool, we could ask them to watch the video on mute, for example, and they could predict what is going to happen in the video. Or we could watch it after they've watched the video and they could try and reproduce, try and remember what they heard in the video. So those are just a few ideas for how you can use the classroom presentation tool.
Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for watching that, everyone. As I said, I, I really wanted to do that live, but I didn't think that the internet connection would necessarily cope with me talking here and doing that at the same time. So, as I said, I recorded that for you yesterday, but that just gives you a few ideas of how you could use different things on the online present on the classroom presentation tool, some different ways that you can maybe use the pictures or the different tools that are available, some different things that you could do aside from the actual games and activities that are embedded in it. Because remember, as I'm sure all of you know, if you've got a picture, even there are many, many things that you can do with a picture to get your learners to interact and to produce lots and lots of language, which ultimately is what we all want. So I've got a few tips for using the classroom presentation tool if you're teaching your young learners online. The first thing, as I said, is make sure that you have got a good internet connection and both you and your students need to have as good a connection as possible. If it's possible, use an um, installed version of it. So if you've got the option between either using a classroom presentation tool that's hosted online and that's streaming, or you've got it downloaded on your computer, use the version that's downloaded on your computer. Agnes, yes, you're right. It's about the upload speed as well as the download speed. So if possible, if you can use a version of CPT that is hosted on your computer, that will be faster and it will be less subject to there being problems with the internet. If you're using video conferencing software such as Zoom, make sure you check the share sound box if you're sharing the screen with your students, because if you don't check the share sound, you're going to miss out on all of the audio and all of the video and all of the other things that are part of the CPT. So make sure you tick that box. It's quite small, it's very easy to miss. Remember, it might sound obvious, but remember, once you have shared your screen, your students can see everything. So if you've got an other windows or unnecessary programs or things open, make sure you close them down before your learners start seeing what you've got open. And make the most of the tools available to you. I shared a few examples there. Obviously, different interactive whiteboard software has different tools on it, but think about the different things that you can ask your learners to do, even if you haven't got them in the same room as you and there's functionality that you normally have on your IWB that obviously you don't have because they haven't got the software in front of them. They can't go and touch the screen and do things. See what things you can do. Focus on what you can do rather than what you would like to be able to do, but you can't. And I wanted to share this link with you here. So this link has got lots and lots of really helpful resources on it, including some step by step videos that talk you through different ways that you can teach online, particularly, as I said, focusing on how to use video conferencing software. But this is really useful in that it completely walks you through how to do different things, how to give your students control of the screen, for example. So then some of those activities that I was just showing, you could give your students, one of your students, the control of the screen and ask them to highlight what words they think mean this or what words they don't understand, for example. Or you can ask them to do one of the activities. It also tells you how to do things like breakout rooms so you can use group work or pair work. Obviously, you probably don't want to do that with any really young learners, but if you've got a small group and they're quite sensible and you think they're capable of it, it might be something that you might want to try. So that link at the bottom there has got lots of instructions, lots of really helpful resources. And as I said, those Zoom ones, they're all videos. So you can follow it along, you can pause it, you can replay it and look at it as you need to. Okay, so that's our option one, if you like, is 
teaching online using the classroom presentation tool. But now we're going to come on to our second option that we can use, and that is teaching online using an ebook. So this is a really good alternative option if your internet simply isn't going to be good enough to teach using the CPT online. You've tried, it's not going to work, and there is nothing you can do about it. This is a good alternative. So the ebook is um, loads through an app called Vital Source, and you're given an ebook code that you, you download this app and then you redeem the code. When you reopen the app, your book is there, uh, the digital version of your book, the ebook version. And it does, I found this quite helpful, it does remember where you were the last time you opened it as well, which is very useful if you're going through a unit and you're teaching multiple groups and you need to remember where you are with each group. It will open up where you last had it. So we've got our book there and then when we click on it, it will come up with the book itself. And that's where it was the last time I opened it. Now, the main functionality that you'll need to use on Vital Source, and this is the ebook app, will be simply these two buttons here. So we've got forward and we've got back. And this little button at the bottom of the screen here, the one that's got the two letter A's next to it. And what that does is it's different tools. So it's got ability to adjust the page size. So you can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. You can zoom into particular parts. And when you've done that, it's got like a little grabby hand tool. So you can move the page around. So it focuses on just the activity or just the picture, for example, that you want your students to look at. You've got the page layout. So as we saw with the classroom presentation tool, you can have two pages next to each other, or you can just have one page. That's what ticking or unticking that box will do. Now, as you all have noticed, there is not a huge amount of options with this in terms of tools. That's really all you've got going for you with the eBooks. So there is a lot less functionality with the eBooks than you've got with the classroom presentation tool. You haven't got the audio and the video embedded and it's not interactive. It's just like having a PDF on the screen. So you haven't got a lot of the interactivity that you would have with the classroom presentation tool. But saying that it does have allow you to have a way of displaying the book and doing activities with the book that you wouldn't have if you didn't have the book and you didn't have the classroom presentation tool option. So that with this, you can still display the book and you can still actually do some things with it with your students. So why would you use the ebook? Well, this is what is recommended for less stable, less fast internet connections. It's not, a, not going to freeze, it's not going to lag, it's going to be a lot better if you've got poor internet available. There are separate ebooks for students' book and workbook. One thing I didn't show you on the classroom presentation tool is that there was a little button at the top of the screen that had WB written on it. If you click on that, it takes you through to the corresponding page in the workbook. So you can just flick between the two if you want to for the student book and the workbook. And in the workbook, it's got another button that you can press and it will come up with the answers if you wanted your students to check their homework, for example. So with the ebook, you'd have separate ebooks for the two different books. As we said, there is less functionality with it. It doesn't have the interactivity. The audio and video for the ebook would need to be played separately. So they're not available as part of the ebook. What you'd need to do is to have those in a separate window. They're all available on the companion site for the series and then open them up and play them separately. But Saying that, I appreciate that lots of the things I've said here sound quite negative. It hasn't got as much functionality. It doesn't do as much. But remember, even if you're using the ebook, you haven't got as many options available to you. It isn't as interactive. That doesn't mean that you can't still make it interactive yourself. Ultimately, any kind of technology is only as good as the teacher using it. And 
I'm sure all of you are great teachers. You've got lots of different ideas. You could still do some of the ideas that we saw with the interactive whiteboard software with regards to the picture. You could still ask your learners to write down all the things they can see in the picture with a time limit, for example. You could still play the video on mute, um, sharing your screen and ask your learners to predict what's happening or what's going to happen next if you stop it partway through. You could still play different games using the pictures. You could show them a picture for a certain amount of time, ask them to remember what they can see and then take the picture away, get them to try and remember what was in the picture. There are still lots and lots of things that you can do to make it interactive and fun, even if the tool that you're using that you've got available to you isn't as obviously interactive. OK, now we're going to move on to our next tool that we can use, and that is teaching online using online practice and a learning management system. So this is a little bit different in that the two things that we've looked at so far are if you're teaching um, and you've got a class that's happening live online. You're using video conferencing software. You're there, your students are there, and it's in real time. It's a, the same kind of thing as if you're in the classroom. But this, the learning, the learning management system and the online practice, this would be something that you'd potentially use for homework, for example. This is what you would do um, to set your students' assignments to do out of the class and then you'd come back to the lesson afterwards. So the online practice that is available for Look is lots and lots of different games and activities. They're all designed to practice the language, the grammar, the vocabulary that is within the student's book and the workbook. Um, but they're completely separate activities to the ones in the print workbook. So even if your students have got the print workbook, although it's practicing the same language, it's different exercises, it's different activities, it's different questions. So it's all lots more practice. Now, we're going to have a look at three different kind of views of how you see this. So this, first of all, is the login screen, and this will be the same no matter who you are, because this is how you get it in. So in all cases, this is the login screen. The online practice and the learning management system are both accessed through your web browser. So you go to Chrome or Safari on your computer or on your phone or on your tablet, type in the address and then you sign in. Now, once we've signed in, there are different things for depending on whether or not you're a teacher or you're a student. And we're going to have a quick look at what the different things are if you are each of these things. So when you sign in as a teacher, your view is going to look something like this. And what you can see here are at the top, we've got two different things. We've got starred courses. So the two books covers that you can see there. These are two different courses. One of them is Look, which is the series that we're talking about today. And the other one is Our World. So that's another series by National Geographic Learning. Um, if you clicked on the Show All button, that would show you lots more courses. But these ones are like my favourite ones. So these are ones that I've favourited. And you can see the assignments that are in progress there. And we'll talk a little bit more about assignments in just a moment. So first of all, what you would want to do is to click on your course and it would take you through to something that looks like this. Now, I'm sure some of you will remember, those of you who are listening carefully, that at the beginning of the video that I showed you, I mentioned that you could, the, the view would be the same whether you were using a downloaded version or whether you were using an online version. And this is where you would find the online version of the classroom presentation tool. So if you click on teacher resources there, then that loads something like that and launch classroom presentation tool. And then if you clicked on that, it would launch the classroom presentation tool into that whiteboard software. And that is exactly the same as the version on the 
classroom presentation um, are on the USB for the classroom presentation tool. So the classroom presentation tool is available in two different formats. So it's available as a USB, but it's also available online. And this online version is for streaming only. So there's no way to download it and put it onto your computer from this. If you wanted to download it and put it on your computer permanently, you would need to purchase the USB version. OK, so moving on to the other teacher resources. So, OK, if we go into the teacher resources in general and you click on a launch course, what you see looks a little bit like the um, classroom presentation tool and you then that you've got the different modules here the different units if you click on each of those so i've clicked on the first one for example you have got something that looks like this now all of these little dots here and the little stars they are all activities so each of these if you click on it it will take you to um, an activity or a game. The stars are games, the circles are activities. So all of these are part of the on student's online practice. Now, what's special about the learning management system, which is the part for teachers, is that you can set these activities and these games as assignments for your students. And that's why you can see all of these assignments in progress here. They're all things that a teacher has gone in and they have set these different things as assignments for their students. So as homework, for example. If we just click on this one, we can see the results for this particular student. So this is what they've done. OK. Now, if we move on to the student's experience, because the teacher's experience will make more sense if we look at it in conjunction with the student's experience. Yeah, Basha, the, the Our World, the new edition of Our World, the student, uh, the learning management system and online practice are built on the same platform. So they're different activities um, and different games and things, but the experience is going to be kind of similar because they're, they're using the same software. Now, for the students, when you go on to the website and you put in your details to sign in, you have something that looks a bit like this, where you can see the different units. But then if you notice at the top, you've got my assignments. And if you click on that, you can see what your homework is that your teacher has set you. On the left here, we've got information about the assignment. So it tells you when it's due, how long you've got to do it. And it's also got an option for the teacher to leave a note for their students. So if you want to tell them to make sure they do it, complete it on time or you want to ask them to do a certain number of exercises and then if they're feeling really enthusiastic and really confident they can do something else as well then that would be where you'd put that information and again we've got the different games and the activities so if you clicked on where you've got the dots and the stars on there if you click on each of those it launches the different activities and games for you to do and it will record your results and then transmit that information to your teacher's account. So your teacher can see what you've been doing. They can see how much you've done. They can see what your marks were for this and they can see if you haven't done your homework. Now, obviously, we want learning to be fun for our learners and that's something that's taken into account with this. Learners can earn awards through doing particular things, through getting certain marks, through completing all of their activities. Um, so you can see just some of them here. Now, if you're looking at all of those pages and thinking they look a bit weird because there's lots of white space, 
that's because although the system does work on desktop or on laptop, it's actually optimized for mobile and for tablet. So if you look at it on a mobile or on a tablet, it's going to be a much cleaner looking experience. And you can see these examples here. It's completely mobile and tablet compatible. So learners can do it wherever they happen to be. Now, we haven't left out parents from the equation either. The parents don't have a separate login account. They access this through their child's account. But if you click on parents view up at the top there, the parents can see a more detailed breakdown of their child's results. This is actually the same view that the teacher gets when the teacher logs in. So you can see a lot more information. You can see how long they've spent on a particular activity. You can see what their mark is. You can see if they've done it once or they've done it lots of times. And yeah, you can see their best attempt at it as well if they've done it more than once. So this is really useful. Obviously, if you can see that they've gone in and they've just spent five seconds on it and or haven't really bothered trying, then you might want to have a word with them about it. But so this gives you the same information that the teacher has got about how they're doing. OK, now I've mentioned a couple of times with this about additional online resources I mentioned with the uh, ebook, for example, that you might want to play the video and the audio in a separate window so you can still share that audio and video, even though it's not embedded. And this is how you would do that. This is the Teacher's Companion site for Look, and it has got lots of other resources available to you. Now, some of these obviously are more appropriate for when you're back teaching in the classroom and the world is a bit more normal again and you can do things like printing out worksheets and using them in class. But a lot of these things are still potentially helpful even when teaching online. So the homeschool connection letters, for example, these are letters for parents which tell them for each unit what their child is learning and has suggestions for how they can help practice the language at home. You've got all of the audio and video available here, so you don't have to worry about finding the right CD or the right DVD or remembering to have them at home with you. You can access that material online. It's also got assessment for tests. And one thing that I haven't mentioned, but is important to know with regards to look is that the um, is that the series is designed specifically to prepare young learners for exams. So although it's great if they're not taking exams, it also will help prepare learners for the Cambridge Starters, Movers, Flyers exams. And it's been specifically geared around those tests in terms of the language taught, in terms of the types of activities practiced. Sylvia, I am 99% sure that there is a Polish version of the Homeschool Connection letter but I want to check that before I say it to you definitely. I'm very sure there is. Um, <laughs> Natalia, do you know? <laughs> OK. Um, and you can also find the answer keys and the audio scripts online as well. Uh, yeah, as we said, if, if there isn't, we can definitely produce one for you. OK, so. Just to finish off, I wanted to share five tips for teaching online. Thank you for sticking with me so far and thank you for interacting. You've been really good. So my first tip is this. Don't panic. We've all been there. We've all had technology problems. I'm very grateful that the video worked in this webinar today, but we all know that sometimes no matter how well you prepare, things don't go as planned, do they? So my first tip is just don't panic. If you're teaching a group, one learner's having problems, then give your other learners a task to do while you help them. If you're teaching slightly older learners, maybe see if they can try and help their classmates sort out the technology. As a reminder as well, obviously, if you're going to use the interactive whiteboard software, it is very dependent on the quality of the internet connection. So that might create some problems. 
don't reinvent the wheel just for the sake of it. It's important to keep some elements of familiarity, even when you're teaching online. If you've got regular routines with your learners, so for example, you always start the lesson by asking them for the date and the weather or how they are or something like that, and then you move on to a review of what you did last time, try and keep those routines as much as you possibly can. It will give your lesson more structure and it's going to help your learners feel more comfortable and relaxed. It's still important to vary your interaction when you're teaching online. If you're using software such as Zoom, we mentioned earlier that your learners can do pair or group work activities using breakout rooms if you feel comfortable with asking them to do that. Particularly as well, if you're teaching a lesson with a smaller group, try and schedule some time where your students don't need to interact with you. So if they're completing an activity in their book, or maybe if you want to have a bit of a break and they're going to do some of those online practice activities that we've just been looking at. Pay attention as well to the environment that both you and your learners are in. You might not have access to your usual classroom resources, but you do have access to a whole new set of realia. You've got things that are in your house, you've got things that are in your learners' homes. So you could, for example, play a game, where, like a guessing game. You could ask them to find different things and then um, your other class, could, other class members could try and guess what they are. You could ask your learners to take you on a tour of their house or you could ask them to tell you about a particular thing that is special or important to them. Now, I've got my pictures the wrong way around here, sorry, but um, as in the physical classroom, bear in mind that your learners ideally need to have a good space to learn in. Ideally, it needs to be quiet and away from distractions as much as possible. Maintain rules that you would normally have at school in that don't let them use other devices during the lesson unless they need it for a specific task. Phones need to be away if they're having an English lesson and tell them to close other windows on their browser at the start of the lesson. I know one of you mentioned at the beginning that your students always ask how many windows you've got open. They need to not have loads of different windows open as well. And my final tip is this. Don't be afraid to try something new. Starting to teach online is a great opportunity to explore using new technology, to try new things, maybe play some online games, maybe ask your learners to do things you wouldn't normally get them to do for homework, like make a short film, for example. Now, the thought that I'd like to leave you on is this. Sorry, my eye is watering horribly. Um, the thought that I'd like to leave you on is this. However it may seem, I really don't believe that teachers are going to be replaced by technology anytime soon. In the same way, I don't think that digital will replace print books. Vital skills for our young learners, such as developing the fine motor skills that they need to learn to write, they can be developed on paper in a way that they simply can't if we're only using digital resources. Health guidelines suggest that children's exposure to screens is limited and they're concerned about the effects Sorry, <laughs> um, they're concerned about the effects that technology may have on their well-being, on their social skills and their development. Technology can be a great asset. It's a powerful tool for learners to use to explore their world. But ultimately, technology is only as... Sorry. <laughs> I think I've got an eyelash in my eye. OK, that's fine. Um, but yeah, ultimately... Technology is only as good as the teacher who is using it. OK, so has anyone got any questions? I know we've been answering a few questions as we've been going along, but I'm happy to stay for a few moments. Ah, Natalia, OK, thank you for letting me know about that. That's something that we will definitely look into and we'll see if we could get some homeschool connection letters done for you for look. As you say, yet. <laughs> I'll put it on my list for things to do tomorrow. OK, so. If you've got any questions, I can still I can hang around for a few more minutes and answer, so don't worry, you can still type them. 
So just to share with you just before we finish um, some other resources here that you might find useful. Um, obviously, this webinar is specifically for you guys in Poland, but National Geographic Learning does do uh, webinars for everyone across the world. They are global webinars. Um, they have world round teacher trainers and sometimes National Geographic explorers as well. Um, they're all completely free to join and you get a certificate of attendance for taking part. And in focus, that's the second link there, that is our blog. And this has got lots of different really good practical ideas for you to use with your students as well. Uh, Basha, yes, there is a new version for every part. Yes, there will be a new version of all levels of our world. Okay, so I will leave you with these. These are the contact details of my colleagues at Nova Era. And also, I will just bring that over. That is your certificate. So you should be able to see, there you go. Uh, you should be able to see underneath the presentation, there should be something that says click to download your certificate. And it's got an option that says download files. So if you click on that now, you can download your certificate of attendance for joining the webinar. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. You've all been really good. Uh, okay. Hmm. I could say, I'm not sure. Has anyone? I know we often have problems with people down, trying to download on mobile, but it's work now. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. I hope you all have a really good evening or rest of the evening. Thank you very much for joining me and giving up your free time to listen. And I hope that some of the ideas that we've shared have been helpful. If you do have any questions about Look, if you want to see more, or I know we've mentioned Our World Second Edition a few times as well. If you have any questions or you want any more information about that, then please do contact my colleagues at Nova Era. They will be all too happy to help you. Okay, right. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.